Hello, everyone. Welcome to this video where we are going to learn uh, uh, new interesting concepts because we need to clarify that before we start with the actual practice and the exercises. So I think it's very important that we start uh, with these concepts, clarifying them. Maybe you have heard about them. Maybe you know a little bit, maybe too much about them. So it's important that we clarify and that we also agree on a definition of these concepts because those are the ones that we will be using uh, in second and third partial. So. Um, Today's presentation is about the Forex and Forex actually means foreign exchange market, right? So, or actually it's just foreign exchange, but usually it refers to the market. I will explain in a second. So the first three concepts that I want to clarify maybe because maybe you know about this are these three over here, foreign exchange market, foreign exchange and foreign exchange transaction. They are quite similar, but and maybe we are a little bit confused because maybe you have heard about them from somewhere else, from maybe, uh, I think there are some apps that you use or some web pages that they call them Forex where you can kind of bet. It's like an investment, but it's like making a bet. I will explain also that in, in the next slides, in the next videos. Uh, what is that? What is that thing that web pages and apps called Forex? But for the purpose of this class, and, and this comes from the uh, finance theory, foreign exchange, we will start with this, foreign exchange is the money or the currency from another country, from a foreign country. So every time that we refer to foreign exchange, that will be the foreign currency. So it's the same as saying foreign currency or foreign country currency, foreign country money, something like that. So I think this one is quite easy. Then the next one that I want to clarify is this, the Forex market, because that thing that we heard about on the news with our friends on the internet that they call Forex is not the same as what we are going to analyze in this class and what the financial theory talks about, because the financial, sorry, the foreign exchange market is the place where people exchange currencies from different countries. So that is the foreign exchange market. And something important, you should take note of this, or maybe you can think about it. Uh, we can discuss this on the Zoom session, is that the definition calls it a place. So it, it is a place, the market is a place. But a place can be a physical place, like maybe uh, like, I don't know, like a bank, for instance, that is a physical place where people exchange currencies, but it also can be a virtual place. And that thing that I said about banks, it can also happen in a house, right? Or it can happen on the street. So the foreign exchange market is a place, but technically it can happen everywhere. So when it says it's a place, it doesn't mean that it's only one place, that it's only physical. It's not like that. It means that it is anywhere where people can exchange currencies and it can be also virtual, which nowadays is very popular. So that's something that you should uh, take note. The foreign exchange market, the Forex market, it's a place where people exchange currencies from different countries. So it can be a physical place, it can be a digital place, and it doesn't have to be only one place. Like you say, only in this place people can exchange currencies. No, it's any place where people can exchange currencies. And then the final thing, and this one is also very important, I, I will ask you to take some notes in here, is what is a Forex transaction? And at a Forex transaction, it's the agreement when there is someone who wants to buy and someone who wants to sell uh, a currency. And something extremely important in here, if this is an agreement, is it necessarily to have the exchange of the currencies, like should it happen in order to be a transaction? And the answer is not. It is not necessarily that in, the, in that moment, people exchange the currencies. The only thing that is necessary is that there is an agreement. That's why it's a, an agreement, right? So uh, that is the most important thing that there is an agreement. And in order to be a transaction, there has to be these five things, okay? So you need to, to say that these five things are happening in that agreement. So the first one, it's about the currencies. So it means, or the assets, what currencies are we exchanging? That agreement has to specify the asset that they are exchanging or the, or the currency, right? So maybe it's yuan with dollars 
or yen with uh, pounds, something like that. Okay, so that's the first thing that you should consider. It is that you are specifying the uh, assets or the currencies that you are exchanging. The second thing is the amount, the quantity, how much you are going to buy or how much you are going to sell. So this is also something very important, the quantity. Number three, it's the, it is the price, okay? The price is also very important. So the price sets, uh, the price at, at which you are going to buy or sell any currency. So it can be maybe 20 pesos for $1, but you need to specify the price. So this is number three. Uh, then number four, this is also super important. Number four is the place. Where are you going to exchange the currencies? So it can be that you are going to exchange the currencies in the same place because uh, it's easy for you, right? So you need to specify that in your agreement in order to make it a transaction. So it can be in the bank and that's fine. Or it can be somewhere else. Actually, like an interesting story about this is like if you read any book about derivatives, uh, there is one story where someone from, I think it was JP Morgan or one of these really uh, large, um, uh, large uh, banks uh, signed uh, uh, um, an agreement to, ex to buy corn. I think it wasn't really foreign exchange currencies. It was about corn. But the thing was that this person bought corn and he failed to specify the place of delivery and they delivered, I don't know how many tons of corn in the offices of JP Morgan in New York. So it was quite a funny story that you can read on, on in some books. But so that's why in a foreign exchange transaction as well, you need to act to, to make sure that you are writing and you are uh, specifying where where is the place where you are going to exchange the currencies. So that would be number four. And finally, number five is time. That's, uh, that's why I say it doesn't have to be on the present. You can sign that you are going to exchange the, the currencies in one month or in two months or tomorrow or something like that, or in one year, two years, it really depends. Uh, we are going to analyze that also in another video. What happens when we are making a transaction, but in the future, okay? So remember, these are the five things that you need to, to kind of pick with a, you are going to say, yes, it's, it's okay. This transaction has this. These are the five things that you need to check. First, the, um, it is the asset, uh, second quantity, then price, uh, the place, and the time. When are you going to exchange that? So take note of these five characteristics. So I think I will stop the first video in here. I will continue on the next video.